Hi, welcome to the IntroStat lecturing series. And uh, this is uh, our lecture number two. And uh, we are working on the unit of uh, testing hypothesis here. So in this lectures here, we're going to do some basic introduction for the fundamental terms when we're doing the testing hypothesis here. Okay, so like in here, we, so in this lecture, we'll focus on what is H0 versus HA and what is the p-value we are talking about. And so, like, okay, let's go ahead and go to our lecture notes here. Okay. All right, so let's get a start. So we're talking about the testing hypothesis. So what is the testing hypothesis here? Testing hypothesis is something, you know, we want to find that out, uh, you know, the people's claims is true or not. So for example, you know, for potato chips companies, and they say, hey, this bag of the potato chips, they have a 14 ounces of chips in there. So is it really a 14 ounces of chips or could it be a little bit more or could it be a little less, right? So it's the claim, it's correct. Or, you know, if we say, hey, you know, I have a two, I have a new drug and uh, try to improve the surviving rate for the cancer patients. So I want to see is this uh, claim is correct? Is the new drug really try to you know really be able to improve the surviving rate of the cancer patients? So what I'm testing, you know, what is, you know the what the old drug surviving rate? What is the new drug provide? And based on the data, can I make the conclusions? That's what I want to test, right? So it's just similar like our criminal justice systems here, and. Uh, you know, I wanted to find out is this person is it innocent or guilty, right? Based on the evidence I have, and that's what is the hypothesis testing is about. You can really do the hypothesis testing for many different situations here. Okay, so now in here, let's start here, right? So when we talk about the hypothesis testing, you know, doesn't matter what you try to test, right? So we always, when you perform a hypothesis testing, they always have four basic part of the hypothesis testings here. So what are the four parts? The part number one is we said, uh, of course, we need to have a hypothesis here, okay? And then the second part is, after I have the hypothesis, I need to have some type of the model, okay? Then after models here, then we need to know what type of the mechanics I need to do. Okay, how do I, you know, what type of mechanic I need to use to draw the conclusions here? So that's why the number four here is will be, you know, based on your data and the based the mechanicals you use, the base the model you try to apply, what is the conclusion? Okay. So when we try to do the hypothesis testing, we always have these four key elements for the hypothesis testing. Okay, so let's take a look at the elements. Number one, see here, the hypothesis is here. Okay, so the, for the hypothesis here, we divided the hypothesis into two parts. We said H0, this is what we say is a null hypothesis here. Or we say it's H1 or HA. So different textbooks, some textbook use H1, some textbook use HA. This is what we call the is alternative hypothesis here. So, what is the non-hypothesis here, okay? So the non-hypothesis here is a type of the thing, you know, like typical we say is people, you know, they claim like, uh, you know, what they claim for. So like I said, hey, you know, I'm in the pharmaceutical company. I say, hey, I have this new drug. I, you know, based on my experiment, I claimed, uh, you know, this new drug can improve the cancer patient's survival rate. Or we had typical, we said, what the historical shows here, okay? So that's what is, what is the history, you know, show me. So then I said, uh, maybe 
I'm different right now, right? So I want to testing, I'm trying to testing, you know, what is the historical show me or is the typical we call it is like the sum the status quo a half there. And uh, that's what is what we said is the non hypothesis here. So for example, in the criminal systems here, we said uh, we assume innocent until prove guilty, right? So the status quo is uh, what? is innocence here, right? So that's what is the hypothesis and non-hypothesis here. So typical, we, um, so that we have some, we write like this, right? So we said that this is H0. So H0, this is the, you know, you, certain things you are interested. So that's what we call it, it's a parameter. So remember the parameter is for the populations, right? So the parameter is equal to some type of the value. This is a, what a some of the hypothesized values here, right? So like a, the examples here we talk about, we said, uh, hey, you say the survival rate, this new drug going to improve the survival rate, right? So, so what is your old drug's survival rate? So the example you said, okay, my new drug, the survival rate, so proportion, okay, so the chance to survive maybe is 35%, right? So that's why it's 35%. Then this new drug can improve it. So that's what is people's claim, and that's what is the historical data show. Or you said, like we talk about in the, you know, you said, hey, you know, from the previous history, the smoker, you know, we have about the population, we have uh, based on my, you know, in the prior, prior to the year 2000s, maybe my smoke proportion is 42% here. Right, so that's what the historical, or we say in the criminal justice system, then we say, hey, it's like, uh, you know, because we are presumed innocent to improve duty, guilty, right? So we say, hey, I assume, you know, if I have a trial, so my non hypothesis is like, it's the innocence here, right? So the non hypothesis, that's what we typically would say is the claim and the the historical data or sometimes is status quo here. Okay, so now let's take a look at what is the alternative hypothesis. So like I say, sometimes people use H1 or sometimes use A, H of A, depend on the different textbook, you will see the notations here. So what is the alternative hypothesis here? So alternative hypothesis is sometimes we also call it is what? We call it a researcher hypothesis. Okay, so the research hypothesis, because like, for example, what I mean the research hypothesis. So for example, here you say the, all right, so you say this is, we call the, this is a new drug, right? So this is a new drug to help the, okay? So for example, here, so you say that, okay, you claim, you know, the new drug going to improve the cancer survival rate. So you are interested to see if that is the correct or not. So that's why we say this is what we call this research hypothesis because you want to challenge that, right? So you said, uh, hey, you know, the used to, the old drug is 35%. I'm thinking the new drug going to improve, right? So what is your alternative hypothesis here? So you say, okay, your new old drug, you tell me is 35% improve rate, right? So then my new drug are going to what? Because I'm a researcher, I want to prove the new drug is more effective. So what is here? Hey, my survival rate will be greater than 35%. That's why we put the HA, that's the things we try to establish. That's the things we collect the data for. That's the things we do the experiment for, right? So if you trust that, that's why if you say, okay, the old drug is 35%, that's fine. And now you want to see this new drug is better than old drugs, right? So for example, like this one's here, this is a smoker, the percent of the smoker, right? So the percent of the smoker, you can do the same things. You can say, 
Well, you know, the, this was what the historical data show me the percent of the smoker is will be what will be like a 42%, right? And uh, now, you know, the up the new technologies, like the, the years, the people, you know, tell you, you know, the don't smoke, you'll get a cancer, those things, right? So you said, hmm, I'm thinking about maybe the smoker. So, the percent of the smoke is going to decrease. So I'm going to check this to see is the smoker in the year 2011 and 2020 is, you know, this less than the historical smoking. So you say, hey, I want to test. Is this is less than 42%, correct? So that's what is we call is a research hypothesis, HA, that's the one you want to test here, okay? And then you want to, and other things here, you can say, oh, well, okay. So I'm curious, uh, you know, to, to see, you know, you tell me the university, the freshmen, when they come, in, come into the school, the average GPA, you know, is 3.2, okay? So you say the average GPA is 3.2. Then you say, hmm, I'm not sure is 3.2 and but uh, I'm not I, I, I'm not sure it's 3.2 but I'm also not no is bigger is a bit better than 3.2 or is worse than 3.2 so I want to do experiment to find out is exact you know is really you know is what is the average GPA is right so so you can say here you say okay I'm going to do experiment I take a sample so I will take a look of what is my average GPA is here is equal to 3.2 or not equal to 3.2. So I try to test is my GPA is greater than or less than. So it's or you will say is not equal to. Okay. So this type of the hypothesis we say is the research hypothesis. It's just like we said before, is innocent or is guilty. So we said the status quo here is innocent, right? Okay, so then. You can say in here, I said, okay, so because I'm the detective, I'm the district attorney, I want to approve it. So what I want to prove it, I need to go to collect the data. So I want to prove it, uh, this person is guilty, right? So that's what we said, HA. So remember, right, HA is what is you call is your research hypothesis. That's the things because you have a doubt to the people what they claim. Then you like to conduct the experiment or you like to collect the data to establish the, your hypothesis, right? So that's what we call it is the, you know, the research hypothesis here. Okay, so like uh, in here, you know, when we do the hypothesis here, typical, we have three different ways here, right? So we said uh, you claim to a certain value, I think it's bigger than that value, or you claim to a certain value, I think it's less than that value, or you claim to a certain value, I think it's not equal to here, right? Okay, so we have a special term for that. So this one's here, right? So if I claim is bigger, Right, so if I claim it's bigger, that means you say it's a 35, I say it's greater than 35. So this is a type of the hypothesis we say, this is the one side test, right? So this is what we call this the one side test because I only concern, I only want to test it's bigger than the number you told me, right? So because it's bigger, so this is, is one side, you know, we also said this is right hand side. Right, because the, in here you say this is 35, right? So this is 35%, you want to bigger, so it's on the right hand side of a 35. So that is, we call this the one side of test. So for here, for this one here, you want to test is less than, right? So less than, that means that I only care about the one, you know, one direction. So this is also, we call this one side test. And because I'm testing the less than, right? So what type of a test do we call it here? This is, we call this left hand test, left hand side test. Right, so it's kind of a, 
intuitively true. Then for this ones here, because I am testing not equal, that means uh, it could be bigger or it could be what? It could be smaller, right? So this type of test, I have a two possible situation. So I call it, this is a two-sided test here. Okay, so like most of the hypothesis, they all, you know, when you test certain specific values here, and then that's what, uh, you know, that's what the, you have the three different situation. You have one side to the right, you test something's greater than, you test something's less than, or you test something they are different than you know, what the value you claim here. Okay, that's what is the hypothesis testing. This is probably is very important when you do the hypothesis testing. So the first thing is you need to decide what is the non-hypothesis, right? So what has been existing and what is alternative hypothesis. So, so what is the hypothesis? You try to challenge, you try to prove this, right? So remember the hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, we call it research hypothesis. The reason why it's research hypothesis is the one you want to challenge the non-hypothesis. That's why you spend the money, you spend the time, go to collect the data and do the analysis. So you hope that your data can tell you, you know, is the non-hypothesis to claim is correct or not, or your data will support what you think, you know, what is your research will do. Okay, so the, then the next thing is here, this is a little bit more like the, related to the statistics, you know, kind of the, you know, the, the mathematical part on the statistics here. So we need to have models here, okay? So the, now, so what is the models here, right? And uh, so let's the, use the models here is you, Okay, so first thing here you need to do here is, um, you know, you plan a statistic hypothesis test, right? So the first thing you need to know what you need to specify the model you're going to use. So for this class, we're only going to cover few models, you know, because this is intro stat class. And so we're going to take a look at some very basics here. So this is the statistician's work. They develop the model depends on what type of the test you want to use. So for example, see so here we said the hypothesis we want to test the, the percent. You have one model. If I want to test the different average, you have a, different models here, okay? So the first things here, so when you do us, you know, the hypothesis testing, so after you write it out, right? Then you can say, hey, what model I'm going to use here, okay? And uh, so the, then the sex, the, you know, the, then the next things here, we need to be careful here is, uh, Okay, let me, okay, so let me get the, these things here. So the next thing is here, you know, for every model here, right? So for every model, remember we said, this is a statistician, so they developed the model based on the, some mathematical assumptions here. So the, you know, so in here, the every model is here, right? So the every model is here, they have a certain assumptions here. So I can use a certain like a statistic tools to drive the conclusion. So as a good you know, report, you should state the assumptions and the check you know, to see you know, the, the way you did your data to see any uh, what other conditions the data you're taking will satisfy those uh, assumptions, All right? or not, right? So that's what we talk about the models here. And uh, also the, okay, so the in here, the other things here, so every model, okay, so every model you're going to have uh, names, okay? So in here, in the book here, the every model you're going to have a name. And it is better, you know, when you try to write your report, if your boss or your professor asks you to write a statistic analysis report, it is better to put it down 
what type of the model you are using here. And since this is the intro step, so you know we are going to introduce a few simple models, and then the, you know we're not going to go to the mathematical part of the models, and we're just going to show you how to use the models here. Okay, so the you know there are a couple model we're going to use. So we're going to use we call this the one population proportion test. Okay, so we said a one population proportional Z test. Okay, so also we're going to talk about uh, we thought is the one population, two population proportional proportions Z test. Then we're going to talk about uh, one population. mean z-test and the t-test here. So most likely those are the four very, very commonly used models we're going to cover in this unit. After we you know, finish all the terminologies and then we're going to take a look at what's that mean. So like in here, you know, the meaning here is just like you say, this is one population proportions, right? So that means if I want to test, if you tell me the drug is going to improve the cancer survival rate. So this is P, is a proportion, is a survival rate, percent of surviving, right? So that's why we say is one population proportion Z test. So two population proportion Z test is like, so if you have two new drugs, you have A and B, so you want to see how good the survival rate comparing these two new drugs. So that's why I have two population proportions Z test. Then the other one we say is the mean test is here. That means the average, if you tell me the average is a certain number, then I want to see is the average is different or it's greater than or less than, right? So those are the four tests of the model we're going to probably use here and we're going to cover in this, uh, in this unit here. So right now I'm just writing it down the, the names and in the later lectures, we're going to go over each one here, okay? Okay, so now what is the mechanics, right? So the mechanics is just like, how do we do it, right? So it's a, how, do we, how do we do it? So the mechanics here is the, okay, so let's see here, the mechanics here. So this is the, the easiest part of the mechanics here. So let's take a look at what is the mechanical tell us. So the, that means, you know, in the mechanical part, so that in that part, then we put the actual calculations of our test statistics. So you go to collect the data, after the data, you put the calculations here. All right, so also you need to know the different tests, like we have the different formula and the different test statistics here. Okay, so that means in here, like we say, hey, here we want to test the different things. If I want to test a population proportion, I will have a different formula and then I test the population means here. All right, so that's why they tell you the different tests will have a different formula and the different test statistics. And uh, now, and uh, we said uh, in here, I'm not going to emphasize too much by using the hand calculation. So you can either handle by using some statistical program like R or like some calculator, they have the building function, so it's a lot easier. So specifically, for example, if you have a TI-84 or some higher versions of the graphing calculator, then they have all these models built in, all right? So you just need to plug in the number or data and they will give you the, all the mechanical, they will do all the mechanical part for you, do the calculation for you here. Then it will be up to you to, you know, to interpret that, okay? Okay, so that's the four elements in here. 
So under the me mechanicals, so here, right? So for example, if you use the TI-84 calculator or you use some software, they're always going to spit it out one very important number for you. This is what we call the what? This is what we call is the p-values here. So p-value, this is such important concept here, right? So the so what is the p-value? Let me give you the definition. Then we can okay. We can get a, a example to show you. Okay. All right. So the key things here. So the that's why I said the ultimate goal of the calculation is to get a p-value. Okay. So what is the p-value? So we say the p-value is a probability, it's a chance, okay, that the observed statistic values will occur. This is a super, super important concept. So the p-value is associated with the statistic. So remember from the lecture number one, so what is the statistic? Statistic is the value you get out from the sample, right? So then here they say, if the p-value is small, we will reject the non-hypothesis. That means the smaller p-value, stronger the evidence to support your research hypothesis here. Okay, let me give you a one examples here. So like the example we talked before, say, hey, you know, in the criminal justice is here, right? So I have, a, you know, in the criminal justice, so we said, hey, we have the, this person, you know, the non-hypothesis is innocent, correct, All right? And then my alternative, uh, Hypothesis is what is the guilty, right? Okay, so this is my first part. This is my hypothesis here. Then let's do it. So this is my hypothesis. And then the models here. So if you are the detective, so you you what you need to do? So you want to go ahead to collect the data, right? So that's why we say to find the model you're going to use, like in here from the. If you do the statistical testing, right, you need to find the model. So you say, okay, the model I'm going to find, you know, so from this uh, criminal justice, you say, hey, I'm, maybe I'm looking for some witness, right? And uh, then the next thing here, maybe if I see I can collect uh, some DNA samples here, right? So then other things here, maybe, I can provide some evidence, you know, the evidence, you know, like the evidence, uh, you know, in the crime scene. So for example, if you find a, a hair sample, all right, okay. So those are the models here, right? Now, of course, and then the mechanical part, like I'm just using not the numbers, so you will be able to understand that. So then the mechanical part is here. You will say, I'm going to, Estimate, you know, I'm going to do some analysis for here. So you will interview the witness, you do the DNA analysis, and then you do the hair sample analysis here. Okay, so now, okay, so let's assume the mechanical analysis. You did the DNA analysis here. Okay, so if you you did a DNA analysis and then and you find a match. The match with your suspect, right? So you find the DNA, the DNA sample you took it from crime scene is match the DNA for your suspect. Okay, so we know the chance for the two unrelated people that have a DNA match is very, very small, could be one in a million or one in a two millions, right? So that's why we say, now you have a match. So that means this is your p-value, remembers, right? 
So the p value is the chance that is your observed statistic value. So that means the p values here is one, let's say the one in a million. Right, so, you know, the p values here, because you take a sample of the DNA, right now, this DNA match your suspect. Okay, so that's why the way you interpret this, you said, okay, if this suspect is innocent, right? So that means uh, if the non-hypothesis is correct. So if this uh, suspect is innocent, under the non-hypothesis is innocent, you find a match. And we know if for the two innocent people, two unrelated people, they have a DNA match, the chance is very, very small. So that means your p-value is very, very small if the two related to unrelated people. And then now it happens, right? So if such small chance for the two unrelated peoples, right now it happened. So what's that mean? That means these numbers here provide what? Very strong evidence for what? To support the HA or to reject the H zeros here. Right? Is that true? Right? So he said, hey, because the p value, p value is associated with the statistic. So in here, our statistics here is you take the DNA, then you find the mechanical, the mechanical part after you did analysis, you find the DNA match the suspect's DNA. Then you say, okay, if, if the suspect did not commit the crime, so for the two unrelated people, the chance for the p-value to occur is very, very small, right? So it's one in a million, and then now it happened, right? So it's happened one in a million, and then now in this, you know, in this crime site, it happened. So that means I do have very strong evidence to say this person probably is not innocent to support my suspect is like that this person could be guilty. All right, is that right? Okay, that's what is the p-value, right? So it's very important concept. It's related to your statistics, right? So now let's take a look at another examples here, right? So the same this criminal, you know, the criminal hypothesis examples here. All right. So now if you say, I have a hair sample, right? So this is your sample. Now I find out that this hair, the color is black. So it's a black color hair. And uh, the suspect has black hair. Wow, I find a match, right? So I find a match because the, the hair color is the same. But what is the p-value here? The p-value is the probability, the statistic, sample statistic. That means I'm getting a black hair from the crime scene. So what is the p-values here? So what is the chance, you know, you find a black hair? Probably quite high. Let's say it's a 25% chance that you will find a black hair because we have a, only a few hairstyles, the style, you know, the types, right? So the chance to find a black hair probably is pretty high, it's 25%. So this suspect matched black hair, right? So do I have a strong evidence to say this person is guilty? Probably not, right? Because my p-value, the sample value, the chance for the sample value is high and it happened. So I'm not a surprise, okay? So that what is the p-value mean? So it's very, very important, you know, the, the p-values here, right? Okay, so that is what we say is the p-values here. Okay, so is the p-value is depend on your sample. So what is the chance that the sample will get that value? Just like in here, we say, what is the chance? The DNA, you took it from the crime scene, well, match the DNA of the suspect, right? So the chance if the suspect is, uh, you know, is innocent. So we know the two unrelated people, the chance is very small, maybe one in a million or 
one or two millions, right? So the p-value is too small, very small. So we like the smaller value of p-value. Why? Because this is my research hypothesis, right? I really want to establish this, right? So that means I hope my p-value is small, right? So that's why they said here, so if a p-value is small enough, then I will reject. So I help me to support my research hypothesis, HA. Okay, so that is what is the mechanics part. So it will always will give you, you know, after you do the calculation software, it will spit out a p-value for you, all right? So this is how do you interpret the p-values here. Okay, so this p-value has is not what we call it a proportional, right? It's not it's a population proportion. Every test, it doesn't matter what you test, you know, you have an associated p-value. So the last part in the hypothesis testing is the decisions here. Okay, so let's take a look at the decisions here, okay? Okay, so now, so for the decisions here, the first questions you will ask yourself, okay, so, so the, the first section you will ask yourself is probably, you know, is like, uh, what is the, you know, how small, you say very small, how small is small enough, right? So that's the first question is, how small is the p-value? then will support my research hypothesis here. Well, in here, you know, that's the one of the beauty for the, you know, the statistics. We don't have a definite number say, hey, one in a million is small enough, or one in a two million is, you know, is small enough. It really depends on what you're testing, all right? And uh, also, it depends on how serious the results you make. So for the criminal justice cases here, right? So if a person is like the innocent or guilty, I do want the p-value to be very small. Why? Because I do not want to put an innocent person in, you know, into the jail, correct? So that's why I want to have the very, very small p-value. Then for some other test, might not be that serious. And then maybe I don't need that small p-values here. I don't need the, the evidence is that strong here, okay? And uh, so that's why here we said the p-value and the decisions here, right? So of course we wanted the smaller p-value and uh, then, you know, the we wanted the smaller p-values here so you can, you know, the reject you know, you can reject a non-hypothesis here, but there's no definite to say how small is small. That's why, you know, as a researcher, right? So you need to look at the data and make the decisions, okay? So the, so that's why when you decide, uh, so what is the conclusions here, right? So you can conclusions here. So you want to write the conclusions for your testing hypothesis here. So you want to tell the people who read the reports, right? So you want to see, so you want to say you want to the reject, reject the non-hypothesis, right? So you said, hey, and uh, is this better, you know, if you provide, uh, you provided the p-value, so let the people say, see how strong, you know, your data support, right? So we're going to go over the how to write the conclusion statements when the time we are, have some real example to, to work on here. So you will say that I'm going to reject uh, H0. And uh, if you don't have, a, for example, like the one we talk about, the black hairs, right? The p-value is 25%. So I really cannot say I have a strong evidence to reject H zeros, right? And uh, so the statistic terminology, instead of say reach, so accept H zero, typical we do not like the word accept H zeros here. The reason why we do not like the 
you know, the word accept is because the, this is the H0. And the, I, because I'm doing this experiment because I want to challenge this, right? So right now my data doesn't support, but I don't want to say, okay, I accept the result. So typical, we said, uh, instead of say accept, we typical we said, oh, I fail to reject. Okay, so I fail to reject. That means that, okay, as the, the you know, like the, I'm the detective, I would say, that, hmm, right now I don't have the data, right, to say this person is not innocent here. So that's why I say is a fail to reject here, okay? So that's why in typical, when you write on the conclusion, we don't like the conclusion said uh, I accept uh, because uh, that's why we use the word I fail to reject because right now my data does not uh, support. Then maybe I need to go to collect more data, right? So that's why, you know, how do you write on the conclusion? Like I said, we're going to go over this step by step. So when the time we come to do real some testing. Right now, the things here for this lecture, we focus is the H0 versus HA and what is the meaning of the p-value. Remember, p-value is super, super important, right? So it's tell you what is the chance for your sample data to happen. If it's very small and now it happens, that means they do provide a very strong evidence to you know, reject the H0 so here. Okay, so let's take a look at the some examples here. And now let's take a look to see if we'd be able to write it out. Uh, you know, the we're learning the non-hypothesis alternative hypothesis here. So let's see if we'll be able to write it. Okay, so they said in the 1950, only 40% of the high school graduate went into college. Has the percentage changed? All right, so in here, historical tell me, the percent of the high school graduate go to college is 0.4, right? Then look here, the problem they ask is, you wonder, you said, uh, has the percentage changed? What's that mean? That means uh, I could have more high school graduates to go to the college, or I can have less, right? I'm not sure, right? So what is my alternative here? Uh, my alternative will just be the the percentage is not equal to 0.4. Am I right? All right, so because they're reading the wording very carefully here. Okay, part B is here. They said 20% uh, of a car of a certain model have needed costly transmission work. And after you, you know, the car has been driven from the 50,000 to 100,000 miles. Then the manufacturer hopes uh, you know, they did a redesign for the transmission has improved the problems here. Okay, so let's take a look how do we do here. So here is historically, what is the percent of the car need to this uh, very uh, expensive transmission repair is 20%. And the manufacturing, they redesigned it. Okay, so here, this is keyword. They said they hope to improve Improve the province here. What's that mean? They improve the province. That means, uh, oh, I'm not going to redesign it, right? The reason why I design, I want to improve it. So when you say improve, that means that my percent of the car need this, uh, need this uh, expensive uh, transmission here will be what? Will be less than what? Less than 0.2, correct? All right, so now let's take a look here, the last ones here. Okay, so the last ones here say, we feel the test a new favorite soft drink, like a few years ago when we test a, like the Coca-Cola's drink, the new favorites here. So we only plan to market it only if we're sure over 60% of the people like the flavor. All right, so what, is the, our hypothesis here. So I'm doing this experiment, right? So I want to see if the people like this new flavor of the soft drink. I'm only going to market if it's greater than, it's more than, right? So that's why they say here, this is more than 60%, right? 
So that's why it's my alternative hypothesis that say, hey, I want to see its greatness 60%. Then I will mark it. If the, you know, the proportion is less than or equal to 60%, I'm not going to market it, right? So that is how do we write it to the hypothesis. You said, uh, well, can I say this is P is less than or equal to the 0.6, like 60%? Yeah, you can do that. But, uh, you know, the um, typical when the statistic, we don't put like the, this, you can do this is alternative hypothesis, but the typical when we do the hypothesis testing, the non-hypothesis we typical put the equal signs there. Of course, if you want to say this is because it's opposite, it's greater than 60%, right? So if you want to put it less than equal to, that's okay. Yeah, it should be fine. And but now in here, that's why we typical just to the equal. Then you that because the main interest is what? Our main interest is uh, our what? is our HA anyways, right? So the main interest is our HA anyway. That's what we call is the research hypothesis. Okay, that's it. That is the topic for this lecture. So, so two key concepts, right? The non-hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, right? So the alternative hypothesis is what you are interested to prove. That's why you collect the data, you do the data analysis, you want to prove against what the, your original alternative hypothesis. And another very, very important concept we call is the p-values. P-value is the chance for that, uh, you know, the, for your sample statistic to have that values, like the DNA examples, right? If you have a match, what is the chance, you know, if two, you know, if this suspect is uh, innocent, but uh, you know, you find the DNA layer, you match the DNA in the crime scene, right? So the p-value, the smaller p-value, and stronger the evidence to reject my non-hypothesis here. All right, that's it. It's a very, very true important concept. And uh, so the need to practice to write it down, the alternative hypothesis, a hypothesis, and uh, alternative hypothesis and non-hypothesis and uh, make sure you fully understand what is the p-value means here, you know. So I typically kind of tell the student, if you remember that the DNA example, then you know why the smaller p-value, the stronger evidence to reject the non-hypothesis here, okay? So, or you can say it's supporting your research hypothesis. All right, that's it. And it's nice to talk to you and looking forward to talk to you in our next topic. We will continue the hypothesis testing here in the next lectures here. Okay, bye.